Hello friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. In today's video, we are gonna be doing a video that I like to do every December, where I chat about some palettes that I almost bought this year, but I didn't quite pull the plug. And I think it's a fun way to reflect on makeup's past this year, and maybe just chat about why I didn't pick a certain thing up that I was thinking about. Am I still lusting after it? I like hearing your thoughts on these palettes as well. We're just gonna dive into it. Before we get into the video, I did of course film this look. It should already be up on my channel by the time this video goes up. It's part of my two looks video with the new Lethal palettes, the Metamorphosis and the Evergreen. As far as my accessories today go, these earrings are from Undoubtedly Mad on Etsy, and I'm not sure where this choker's from. So yeah, without further ado, let's just hop in and chat about these palettes that I didn't pick up, but almost did in 2022. Gonna just scooch to the side over here really quick. Let me go to my save folder on Instagram. I usually just bookmark these palettes into a palettes I almost bought folder at the beginning of the year. And I don't put every palette that I've ever seen in here, obviously, just ones that like, I'm thinking about, but I'm not quite sure. Sometimes I put things in here and then I do end up buying them and then I just remove them from the list later. Um, so these are things that I was definitely debating and almost did. I actually have 12 palettes, that's pretty perfect. Like one palette for each month. I don't know if these all came out one palette per month, but that's kind of fun. At the very beginning of the year, Beauty Bay launched these new palettes where there was a blue themed one, green themed one, and a pink themed one, and they had different sizes. I think the blue and green all had small, medium, and super large. And the pink one just had small, and medium, not the large one. Um, I wasn't gonna pick any of these up, but the brand did end up sending me the Earthy and the Midnight in the medium size, and I'm very happy that I have those. But I still heavily debated the Berries one, specifically the Berries one in the medium sizing. I still think this is really pretty. I like the range of depth with this one. We have everything from like pastels to brights to really deep berry colors. And I really do like Beauty Bay's formula. I started using some of their palettes last year and I was really impressed, but I'm not mad that I skipped out on this one. I'm not always one for monochromatic palettes nowadays. I want something with a little bit more variety, something a little more creative, something a little more unique. And while I do think this is pretty and I like the range of colors that are in this Berries one, it's not something that I need to have, and I don't regret not picking this one up, but I do still think it's quite lovely. Moving on to another Beauty Bay palette. <laughs> Beauty Bay almost got me a few times this year. Um, this is the Love Notes palette. I was definitely tempted by this, very Valentine's-y, romantic-y. I love Valentine's Day. I think it is such a cutesy holiday. I love the like colors that go with it. And this one almost sucked me in, but I ended up talking myself out of it just because I definitely didn't need it. There are definitely colors in here that I don't really care about. Pretty much that whole top row I don't really care about. And this is very pastel heavy with only a couple deep shades, which also isn't totally my jam. I like to have a little bit more depth with my palette. So I don't think I would have gotten a ton of use out of this one. I would have used it for a video and I probably wouldn't have really thought about it much after that. I imagine the formula was also pretty good based on like the palettes that I've already tried from Beauty Bay recently, but I'm not mad that I skipped out on this one. I probably would have preferred the berries over this one, honestly, just because at least that one had more depth going on with it. It is a cute one though. I do like it. Next up, the Glamlight Michaela Pot 2. They came out with two palettes, a larger one that I did buy, and then this smaller 10 pan one that I was tempted by, mostly just because I loved my first Michaela palette. It was the first and only Glamlight palette I owned for a while. And then I did pick up that newest Michaela's one. And I almost picked this one up too, just because I knew how much I loved the mattes in the first one and the shimmers but I just decided I didn't need this little palette. The bigger palette definitely stood out to me more. The highlighter trio stood out to me a lot, so I ended up just picking those up and skipping out on this one, and I'm kind of glad I skipped out on it. Again, I would have used it for a video, but I don't think I would have really cared too much about it other than that. I love the sizing of this one. I love that it's only 10 pans as opposed to like, what, 25 or 30 like the other palette is, but I just don't need this one, and I'm not mad that I skipped on it. I like the different shades of green in here. I might have been more drawn to it if those orangey shades were more punchy because they are a little more on the muted, almost neutrally orange side, which isn't my favorite way to wear oranges. If I'm gonna wear orange, I want it to be bright, bright, bright. I don't want it to be almost disguised as a neutral. So yeah, I'm not mad that I skipped out on that one. Next up, number four, another Beauty Bay palette. This is the new Mood palette. I was very tempted by this, those really, deep shades in here definitely spoke to my soul combined with that really bright pink and green right next to each other and then there's that soft lilac -y color as well i thought this was a really fun chaotic but in a good way color story 
but I did end up talking myself out of it just because there are a lot of neutrals in here, which I am not a neutral girly. I like colors first and foremost. I feel like had this been maybe half the size and more focused on these rich deep shades and those brights, I would have been more likely to grab it, but I'm not regretful that I didn't pick this one up. This was almost an impulse decision <laughs> and I'm glad I skipped on this one. I don't think this one adds so much newness to my collection that I have a hole not having it. I still think it's fun, but I feel like now that I've sat on this one for a few months, it's not something that I like had to have for sure. Next up, oh, this one was hard and I only skipped out on this one because I was already buying and trying so much at this time period and I was super busy with a lot of other things so it didn't end up happening but I still think this one is gorgeous. This is probably my favorite one out of everything that I'm talking about in this video and I might still pick it up in the future if it's still available. This is the collab between Sydney Grace and the Fancy Face. I have the Fancy Faces collab with Odin's Eye and I absolutely love it. The Hummingbird palette is so good and this is the Tropic color. It is gorgeous. I've never tried Sydney Grace before. I think I might have had one glitter from them before that I got as a gift but for the most part I've never tried this brand and this color story is just so cool. It's a mixture of like grungy colorful. These shimmers look fantastic. I'm so excited for her new collab. This is amazing. I'm so proud of her. I wanted to pick this one up, but priorities just didn't allow me to at the time. And I do still think about this one. I don't know for sure if I will end up picking it up or not, just because I do have a lot of other things I'm trying to prioritize other than makeup at the moment but I do really like this one. I've been lusting after it from afar and I still think it is gorgeous. I think it's such a unique color story, so fun, and I'm super excited for her. Next up, this is from Sugar Drizzle Polish. This is the Mattes palette. It is an all matte, bluey, purple, almost pinky, turquoisey vibe palette. I think this is super fun. I love all the different shades in here. Super, super dark, all the way to pastel and bright. I think this is a wonderful, like, just all matte palette encompassing different colors, but all flowing together into one cohesive thing. I've never tried this brand before and I am interested in them. There's a couple things they've launched that do catch my eye. I just haven't bit the bullet yet. I did like that Frogs palette they came out with a few months ago as well. I ended up passing on this one just because I'm not really super into all matte palettes lately, which is so funny because even like two years ago, if you gave me the option between an all matte or an all shimmer palette, I would have picked the all matte every time. But nowadays I'm probably more likely to pick the all shimmer palette just because I love seeing all the different unique shimmers that everyone is coming out with lately. And while this one is pretty and I could definitely incorporate my singles with it or the fact that this brand does have all shimmer palettes, I'm sure that was the reason they came out with this one to kind of pair with their shimmer palettes. I just don't know if I would have gotten enough use out of this one outside of just making videos with it. It's very rare that I reach for an all matte palette. I'd rather just use like whatever palette I feel like using and maybe pull in other singles than vice versa, if that makes sense. So I'm not mad that I skipped on this one. This brand is still on my radar, but I'm not regretful that I didn't pick this one up as beautiful as it is. And I've heard really good things about their formulas as well. Next up, this is the Barbie Glam Light Palette. I was tempted by this. I did think the colors were pretty. I think it's a cute color story. I like the, again, there's a mixture of depth and brightness. Just a cute, almost like Malibu Barbie-esque pink, purple, blue vibe, very beachy. Not really my vibe, I'm not a beachy girl, but I do think these colors are cute. But again, it's a little bit larger. I'm not one to prefer a 24 pan palette. I'm getting like better at it. I used to be like anti-large palette for a long time. I can vibe with it now. It's just still not like my number one choice. Nine to 12 pans, maybe even nine to 15 is my sweet spot. So the main reason I didn't end up picking this one up is just because I was thinking about it. And then like, I kid you not, like not even two weeks later, they started teasing their Scooby-Doo collection. So I kind of threw this one out the window. I was like, if I'm gonna buy something new from Glamlight, it's gonna be the Halloween Scooby-Doo collection. It's not gonna be this Barbie collection that I really don't vibe with the theming very much. I just thought the colors were kind of cute. So I was able to talk myself out of it pretty quickly, just knowing that the Scooby-Doo collection was right on its coattails. So. I'm not mad that I skipped out on this one. I honestly might not have even ended up picking this one up had the Scooby-Doo one not launched at all. Um, it's just one that I think is objectively cute, but not something that I had to have. Next up, I think this is number eight. Uh, this is another Beauty Bay palette. Last Beauty Bay palette, I swear. They launched a lot of things that I almost bought this year. This is the Dark Fantasy. This is probably my favorite one out of the Beauty Bay palettes that launched this year. And I was very tempted by it. It's just, 
this launched right at the very end of September or early October and I was already swamped with new makeup. I was prepping to go on vacation like within the week and I just had a lot going on. So I didn't really wanna buy another palette at the moment, but I did think this was really cute. Again, I love that mixture of really deep with the bright, the shimmers in here looked really good. It wasn't super neutral heavy. There was a couple pops of neutral, but definitely more jewel toned focused. I still think this one is absolutely gorgeous. Probably my second favorite after the Sydney Grace and Fancy Face collab. I think this is really cute. I may still pick it up one day if it's still available, but I, I don't think I need this one. I think I'm okay just admiring this one from afar. I don't have to own everything. I do test out a lot of things, quite a lot of things, and I honestly barely have time to test out the amount of things that I do as it is. I feel like I'm constantly just trying to play catch up with all of the new releases. It's, it's like a full-time job, and I already have a full-time job. So it's okay if I don't try everything. I can't try everything. It's just physically impossible. So that's one that I do love, but I think I'm okay letting that one go. Next up, this one I was so, so tempted by as well. This is from Terra Moons. It's a new palette they came out with. They mostly do singles, but I am a palette girly. I've acquired quite a bit of singles over my years, but... I do love palettes first and foremost. That's like always what I'm gonna reach for. And I love Terra Moon singles. So the idea of having a palette from them was really appealing to me. This is the Cosmic Wanderer. It is absolutely stunning. I love this like blue, teal, pink, purple vibe. It is so pretty. I feel like I've been seeing that combination a lot lately. Um, and I really like it. I think it's gorgeous. These shimmers look outstanding. I was so, so very tempted by it, but again, this was like early October. I just had a lot going on, travel expenses, other makeup I was trying out. So unfortunately I was not able to prioritize this one, but I do think it's gorgeous. I've been admiring it from afar. People have been creating really pretty looks with it. And this is another one that I was so close to buying, but I ended up talking myself out of it at like the last minute. I think I was certain I was gonna buy it up until launch day. And then I talked myself out of it. So almost got that one, but didn't, quite do it. Next up, this is another Glam Light palette. This one just got revealed recently, like a couple weeks ago. Um, this is the Strawberry Shortcake palette. I think it's very cute. I loved Strawberry Shortcake as a young child. Um, not so much a thing for me now that I'm an adult, but I did love it as a young child. I think it's super cute. I really like this kind of pink, red, green color story. I think it's very fun. I ended up talking myself out of this one just because I did also recently, about a month ago, get my Glam Light Scooby-Doo palettes and the mattes didn't impress me very much. They were a little more sheer, not quite what I expected based on the Michaela palettes, which are a lot more pigmented for me. They weren't bad, they weren't patchy. I just expected more. So now I feel like I'm kind of hesitant with Glam Light. I'm like, which is the normal? Are they super pigmented? Are they more sheer? And I just, I didn't feel like playing the risky game with this one, you know? I didn't need this color story bad enough to try it and maybe be kind of disappointed again. So I decided to pass on this one. It's cute, but I don't need it. I don't regret this at all. And last but not least, this is a recent launch. These are the two new palettes from Menagerie, the Paws and Claws. I think these are super cute, super fun. I was thinking about buying them on Black Friday, but I did have some other things that I wanted to buy at the time, so I didn't end up getting those. And they just, I was really excited about these when they revealed the cover and the theming. The insides aren't screaming to my soul the way I thought they were. My friend Rachel actually said the pause palette looks a lot like just that traditional like pack of Crayola markers that you would get as a kid, just like the, the easy small 10 pack or whatever. And I totally see that, just those very bright, vivid, like primary colors, which I do love seeing primary colors together um, with the pop of green, I think it's cute, but not something that I absolutely needed. I was expecting something maybe slightly different, like it does match the packaging, but I almost wish it wasn't just like mid-tone primaries with a black. I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. I just wanted a little bit of something more with that one. And then the Claws palette, it's like individually, I think all of these shades are really cool. I love that swampy green color with that really shifty purpley bluey shade in the top, with that really dark burgundy, like the peachy orange color. But all together, it doesn't quite fit for me. It's a very odd color story. It's not bad. I do like a weird kind of interesting color story. This one just, 
I don't know, when I finally saw it, I my first instinct was, oh, I love these, they're fun, they're colorful, but then when I really started looking at them, I was like, you know, I don't know if I want these, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So I did end up passing on those. I don't plan on picking these up. I'm sure they'll be wonderful if you're into the color stories. Um, I love Menagerie's formulas. I think their shimmers are wonderful and their mattes are great, but it's just, these were not the releases for me. So yeah, those are 12 palettes that I almost bought in 2022. I would love to hear your thoughts. Did you pick any of these up? Were you like me and kind of wavering on whether you were gonna buy some of these or not? I would love to hear your thoughts on these if you did buy them. What are some palettes you almost bought this year but didn't end up picking up? I would love to chat down below. If you made it to the end of this video, why don't you leave some emojis you've never used before? And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can follow me on my other socials. You can join the Baddie Bean fam. I am Baddie Bean on everything. Thing, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And if you want, you can subscribe. If you want to see more of my videos, I'm posting every single day in December. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.